Hi, this is Dave Bartosowitz with Have You Experienced Jesus? You know, um, I am very, very, very happy to be with you, Deacon John. Likewise. We're with the, the church here in Salt Lake City, the, the Saints Peter and Paul Orthodox Church. And I know that you're a deacon and you have a great deal of knowledge about orthodoxy. So one of the, the questions I, I want to start off, I have got a lot of people telling me that your faith, when you refer to the Father and you call upon the priest, Father Justin, that that is wrong. Um, that is not right. The Bible declares it, that you should not call anyone Father. So um, how would you address that? How would you address sure. that? I was anticipating that question, okay. as I, we hear it all the time. <laughs> you can let people know there. So I actually wrote down some things about that. So when Jesus says, call no man father, he's using a, lit, a, a device called hyperbole. He's, he's using an exaggeration to make a very powerful point to his disciples. Just like he says, you know, if your right eye offend thee, pluck it out. If your left right hand offend thee, cut it off. Yeah. Yeah. I doubt very many of your viewers are one-eyed and have one hand. No. So we don't take everything absolutely literal okay. in every case. Often we do, but not in every case. So let's talk about spiritual fatherhood in, in the New Testament. Uh, St. Paul says to St. Timothy in, in 1 Timothy 1-2, my true child in the faith. 2 Timothy 1-2, my beloved child. Uh, he says in 1 Timothy 1-18, Timothy, my son. He says the same thing in 2 Timothy 2.1. In Philippians 2.22, St. Paul says that Timothy served with him as a son with a father. Hmm. St. Paul writes to Titus. He says, my true child in the common faith. He writes to Onesimus. He says, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. Hmm. St. Paul writes to the Corinthians. Uh, I actually, I want to read this whole, I just wrote down a little bit of it, but I want to read the whole passage. Okay. It's 1 Corinthians 4, 14 and 15. He says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Okay, so Jesus obviously said that, and, and you clarify that. that I'm going to by that in a minute. Okay. For sure. Yeah, explain that. So St. Peter even says to Mark, he refers to Mark as his son. 1 Peter 5.13, She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does my son, Mark. St. John, in his letter, his first epistle, he says, My little children, I am writing this to you that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. In, sec in 3 John, verse 4, he says, No greater joy can I have than this, to hear that my children follow the truth. Wow. Okay. I think we could keep going on. I think you've done a great job in trying to so explain what do, yeah, what, that the scriptures clearly teaches that that the apostles were, in essence, spiritual father to... Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it shows that. We're just acknowledging the reality that exists. So Jesus, in essence, then, when he was referring to that, what was he really referring to? He's referring to a single person taking too much authority for themselves and becoming a type of guru. Oh, so like, I am the teacher, I am So it's the more father. like the Pope or the prophet? You or? could apply it to that for sure. Okay. Yep. Interesting, I never thought um, of it that way. Jesus so, but did, as a priest, then it's different. It's the same relationship that St. Paul had with Titus and had with Timothy. The okay. spiritual fatherhood, spiritual sons. I don't. Even, I don't think we need to, to address that much more. I think you did a really good job in explaining that. You have you have uh, scriptural facts to to clarify that, which I, I believe that you did. And hopefully, there are people who will realize that maybe they were 
incorrect in that thought. You no, know, one thing that's interesting is that this idea of spiritual fatherhood is a part of the priesthood. You can't separate it from the priesthood. Even Jesus, when he did priestly roles in his ministry, like forgiving sins, he referred to them as my son or my daughter. The paralytic lying there sick with paralysis, mm -hmm. Jesus said, my son, your sins are forgiven. Mm 